Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be going over a very good one-dimensional kinematics problem for physics classes and even for a basis for an AP physics class as well. And I believe this problem originally came from Holt Physics, Surway, and Fawn. It's a great textbook, and this is a good problem, so it is worth paying more attention to. So essentially the problem talks about two students on a balcony. The first one throws the ball downwards, and the second one throws a ball upwards. Now let's just pretend like this is going straight up and straight down, that there's no X motion, similar to this over here. And I do want you to notice that since this is our initial position, and this is our initial position, and this is our final, and this is our final, they have the same delta y in both the first scenario and the second scenario. And they have the same speed, it's just not in the same direction. So you could say they have the same speed, but not the same velocity. They are thrown at exactly 13.6 meters per second. So the first question we have is, how fast is this ball going when it hits the ground? What's its final velocity going to be? All right, and so the first thing we want to do when we do a physics problem is read the problem and translate as we go into physics variables with numbers sort of concepts. So we know that they are both 21.8 meters above the street. Now this is really crucial. The delta y is actually going to be a minus 21.8. And if you don't make that negative, you will get the problem wrong. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There are actually two different ways you could set this up. You could make your zero mark down here, or you could even make your zero mark right here in the y-axis. Either way you do this, it doesn't matter. It still comes out to be a negative change for both cases, a negative 21.8 meters. All right, and we also know our acceleration due to gravity, even though the problem doesn't tell us that, it's gonna be minus 9.81 meters per second squared. And we're gonna write down our speeds, or more correctly, our velocities. One of these is gonna be positive, the other one is gonna be negative. And the question's asking for, what is our final velocity for the first object? All right, well, I have done a screencast or two on kinematics and how to use strategies for this. So I'll put a link in the upper right for that. But for now, I just want to quickly say you're going to be using one of these four equations. And the strategy is going to be to look for the concept that is completely ignored. That's the major strategy. And that's the equation you're going to start with. If you do that, you will solve the problem in the easiest way possible. I will say that there are multiple ways to solve these problems. And if you want to do it in a more difficult way, it's possible to do it in an extra step or two. All right, so let's think about this for a moment and think to yourself, all right, what are we actually ignoring here? Meaning, what is a major concept over here that we are not looking for and we don't have listed off? So pause the screencast if you can right now and think about that for a moment, please. All right, so hopefully you're able to come up with the idea that we are simply ignoring time. Since we're ignoring time, we're going to work with the equation that ignores time. So which of these four equations essentially ignores time? Well, that's going to be the third one, right? Time is not a factor. So the easiest way to solve this problem is to start with this equation here, and that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So we start with this equation, and one of the first things I'm going to do is just change this to y, and I'll write in subscripts over here of y as well. To remind ourselves we're working in the y-axis like this and you can do that this is still displacement if it's in the x or the y still the same concept all right and since this is isolated right here in other words we're looking for this v final in the y then we can go ahead and plug in our numbers because it's already isolated notice over here we've got a squared function so in a way it doesn't really matter if this is negative or positive i'll talk more about that in a moment but if you take a look over here, these are your numbers, and we're not done. I just didn't have enough room, so I'm labeling this as equation one. So on the next slide, when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's equation one again. And we're going to take the square root of both sides, and we end up with 24.7. Now, really crucial, I want to remind you of something that you probably haven't thought about in a long time. When you take the square root of something, your answer can be plus or minus. And so that's going to be really helpful in physics when you're talking about motion because you want to come up with the version that makes the most sense. In this case, the ball is heading straight down for its final velocity. And we've already said that up is going to be positive, down is going to be negative in our diagram at least. And so we're going to say that will be a negative 24.7. So we solved for that. Now let's look at the second part of the problem. The second part of the problem says essentially do the same thing for the second ball. And remember, 
the key difference being this is going to be a positive 13.6 meters per second, not a negative. So for the second one, it's thrown upwards with the same speed that it was thrown downwards previously. All right, so we do the same math, and this is now positive, but because it's squared, it really doesn't matter. The math actually works out to be exactly the same. So check this out. This is my equation one I'm going to label as I go to the next page, and we end up with exactly the same answer. It's going to be hitting the ground at exactly the same speed. So that may strike you as odd, but one way to justify that is to think this ball was thrown upwards and it's going to come down and one way to say that would be true is if it reached the same height going downwards at the same speed that it started going upwards because if it was going downwards at that speed that would be the same speed as this and then of course they would hit the ground with the same speed at the very bottom all right well one way to think about that is to think well what would happen if we threw it upwards and the delta y was zero in other words the final position was right here what would happen to that speed well, you could say we could use this equation here again, but if delta y, change the delta x to a delta y, if that is zero, that means this whole turn drops out. So what that is saying is if you launch an object, it goes straight up, comes straight back down, it will come down at the same speed that it was thrown up with. That's what this is saying. In other words, v final squared is equal to v initial squared. And if that's true, then we could say, all right, well, it's moving downwards at this point at the same speed it's moving downwards at this point. So it makes sense that they would hit the ground at exactly the same time. All right, and so the second half of this, the math is exactly the same, and you end up with exactly the same velocity at the end of the problem. Real quick, if you were going to talk about a third part to this problem, say, what is the difference in the time the ball spent in the air? At this point, there are a couple ways you could go about doing that. One would be this first equation right here, solve for time. You know what your v initial is, you know what your v final is, and you know what the acceleration of the y-axis is. So that would be pretty easy to solve for time here. You could do the same thing over here and solve for time pretty easily. And then if you were asked a fourth part to this problem, what is the difference in position of the balls at some time after they are thrown? The easiest way to approach this is going to be to use this second equation right here, because now you actually don't know what your final velocity is at some time after, like before they hit the ground at some other random time, you actually don't know the final velocity for each of these. So you're going to use the equation that ignores final velocity, which is this second equation right here and then compare the different y final. Instead of x final, you would make this y final positions. All right, and that is it. So hopefully that's been helpful. If you have any comments down below, let me know, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.